Okay, here we are with 9.8 combining functions advanced. So they want us to find f plus g and f times g and then give their domains of each one um, using interval notation. Now, the domain of f plus g is the same as the domain of f minus g and that's the same as the domain of f times g, okay? And every single one of those is the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. The only one that's any different, and we actually have already talked about that one, is when you have the fraction, okay? So when you have the fraction there, it is the domain of f intersect the domain of g, but you also have to go one extra step and remove wherever that denominator equals zero. Okay, so the domain of f over g is the one that's got a little bit extra to do, so it's really the more difficult one. But since we've already done a topic about this guy's domain, um, we're literally just finding this part for this particular topic, okay? So all we need to look for is the domain of f intersected with the domain of g. And that is going to tell me the domain of all three of these kinds of functions, okay? combination of functions. So the algebra part of it would be if I'm trying to find f plus g of x, it's to take the f of x function and add the g of function, g of x function. And if I can simplify it, then I would try. If I can't, you just leave it alone. And so normally you would put your f function and your g function in parentheses when you're substituting, right? And then you decide later if those parentheses are necessary. So there's no coefficient on the front and no exponent to apply, so I do not need that parentheses. And here there's no exponent to apply, and if you distribute this positive one, it's going to remain a positive x squared, and it's going to remain a negative 2. Now these two terms are not inside the radical, so you cannot combine any of this together. So this is the answer for f plus g, the algebra part. Now for f times g, that's the same as saying f of x times g of x. So then if I plug in f of x, and then I plug in g of x, and then about the only thing I can do is take this one radical and distribute it. And so when I do that, I get 5x squared on the outside and then square root of 3x plus 1, minus 2 on the outside, and then the square root of 3x plus 1. Now these are not like terms. Although they both share the radical, this term here has variables, and this term here does not have variables outside the radical. So these are not like terms, which means I can't combine this any further, and that is the answer for f times g. Now, for the domain part, okay? So the domain of f, what is the domain of f? Well, it's a radical, okay? Normally when we're doing domains, it's always negative infinity to infinity unless you have a fraction or a radical. And in this case, I have a radical. And what is the special case about a radical? Well, you cannot take the square root of negative numbers. So whatever's inside that radical has to be positive, greater than zero, or it could be equal to zero. It just can't be negative, okay? So if I solve this expression for x, I get x has to be greater than or equal to negative one, or that x has to be greater than or equal to negative one third. And so if I draw this on the number line, um, here's negative one third, and you have to be greater than or equal, which means there's a solid dot and then everything greater than negative one third. Okay, now what about the domain of G? The domain of G is all real numbers because there's no radical in this expression and there's no fraction in this expression. So the domain of G is just going to automatically be negative infinity to infinity. So if I draw the domain of G, that's actually from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity and everything in between, okay? And so what they want is the domain of f intersect with the domain of g, okay? 
So what do the two pieces have in common? Now notice, this interval up here does not have anything on the left-hand side. So this side is not gonna be what they have in common. They do have this side in common, right? Now it's just a matter of the endpoint. Should I include the endpoint in my interval as a bracket or should I include my endpoint as a parenthesis? So right now I know that it's going from negative one third to infinity. Infinity is always going to have a parenthesis, but I need to decide whether or not this should have a parenthesis, okay? And because it is a solid here and it's also colored in here because the whole line is solid, because it's solid in both places, I am going to use a bracket. Now, if it was not solid in both places, I would have to use a parenthesis. And that means either it's not solid here, or it's not solid here, or it's not solid in both of them, okay? So any of those three cases, I would have used a parenthesis. But the fourth case is when it's solid in both places, and in that instance, I have to have a bracket, okay? So now let's go ahead and look at the next example. So we have here these two functions and they want us to do the exact same thing again. So f plus g is going to be f of x plus g of x, which in this case is x plus five the square root of 3x minus 1. They, um, you don't really need the parentheses for this one. You don't need the parentheses for this term. And there are no like terms. So that is the expression for f plus g. For f times g, we end up with x plus 5 times the square root of 3x minus 1. And so I do have to take each of these and distribute it. So I get x times 3x minus 1 and plus 5 times the square root of 3x minus 1. And again, these are not like terms because, um, oh, you can't see. So I multiplied the two. So these two terms had to get distributed to this one term. So x times that radical and then plus 5 times that radical. Now this term has a constant and then a radical. This term has a variable and a radical, which means they are not like terms. So that will be what I type in for the final expression. Now for the domain. The domain of f is going to be negative infinity to infinity because this function doesn't have any radicals and doesn't have any square roots. Now the domain of g is going to be where the inside of the radical is greater than or equal to zero. So where x is greater than or equal to one third, positive. So what does that look like in the number line? That's gonna be from one third positive with the solid dot because of the bar, greater than zero. Okay, and then the domain of f is actually going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity and everything in between. So these little scribbles that I'm doing, it's because the rest of that line is solid, okay? So all of this is completely solid and all of this line is completely solid, okay? Um, it just saves me a little bit of ink when I um, do the squigglies versus doing like a whole full on colored in. So what do the two things have in common? That it, what they have in common is going to be from one third to infinity, and they're solid in both, so I'm gonna put a bracket around that one third. And this is the domain of that function, of both of these functions, right? They have the same domain. The only one that's different is the division, and that is the same thing, but you're gonna have to end up removing an extra, um, value or values depending on the problem.